Okay, friends, today was the day I was supposed to be telling you about Donald Trump testifying in E. Jean Carroll's second defamation trial against him and how he ranted and raved and probably defamed her again. But a COVID exposure suspended court proceedings, so the hearing never happened. Instead, Trump spent the day consolidating Republican support in New Hampshire ahead of its presidential primary tomorrow. The party will get its second dose of karmic retribution now that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is out. The most anti-woman, anti-immigrant party in America, the party that refuses to let President Biden help curb what they insist is an invasion at the border that wants to turn every woman in America into a forced birth handmaiden, that party, now has a two-person race for the presidential nomination. Donald Trump, the adjudicated sexual abuser with two dozen other accusers and three baby mamas, versus a brown woman who is the daughter of Southeast Asian immigrants, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Haley's last woman standing status arrives as the men formerly challenging Trump have mostly capitulated to their dear leader. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott endorsed Trump in the most humiliating way possible, misquoting civil rights icon Fannie Lou Hamer. We need a president who will restore law and order. We need Donald Trump. We need a president who understands the American people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm so sorry, ancestors. Scott says that he is not ruling out serving as Trump's vice president, despite the fact that, as SNL pointed out this weekend, Trump tried to let his last vice president be hung. Senator Scott seems to be making his best case, however. After complaining during his short-lived presidential bid that the bachelor status that he had, that his bachelor status was used against him to make donors nervous, he's fixed that by ostentatiously announcing his engagement over the weekend. Not to be outdone in the pander game is another South Carolina Republican, Congresswoman Nancy Mace, also endorsed Donald Trump. He backed her primary opponent in 2022, but as we know, every Republican eventually bends the knee. Trump is holding a rally right now, or on a rally tonight, with several of his other former challengers who've all bent the knee. And with Haley now his only Republican rival, kind of, he's stepping up his birther attacks on her. But Tim Scott refuses to denounce the birther attacks on the woman who appointed him to the Senate, nor will North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. Remember him? He says Trump's racist attacks are just politics. It's hard to feel a ton of sympathy for the former governor of South Carolina as she debases herself, pandering to MAGA voters by claiming that America was never a racist country. But you can maybe, maybe give her credit for one thing. After this bizarre display from Trump this weekend. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people, soldiers, National Guard, so whatever they want. They turned it down. They don't want to talk about that. Presumably, he meant former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. Well, here's what Haley had to say about this latest sign that something might not be right with Trump's cognitive acuity. If you look recently, there have been multiple things. I mean, he claimed that Joe Biden was going to get us into World War II. I'm assuming he meant World War III. He said that he ran against President Obama. He never ran against President Obama. He says that I'm the one that kept security from, Jan from the Capitol on January 6th. I was nowhere near the Capitol on January 6th. I don't know if he was confused. I don't know what happened. But it should be enough to send us a warning sign. <laughs> Back with me, Charlie Sykes. Back with me is Charlie Sykes. And joining me, Aaron Age, editor at large of the 19th and an MSAB MSNBC contributor, uh, Aaron. <laughs> Your thoughts <laughs> on any of it? I mean, first of all, maybe this is a case for why we need to be teaching the country's history because uh, the former president seems to be rewriting it uh, mm. at the very least if, if it's not just kind of a memory problem. But yeah, I mean, it is the South Carolina of it all. Even as we look forward to New Hampshire tomorrow, you have Tim Scott backing Nikki Haley, I mean, backing uh, President Trump. Uh, and not backing the person that, that made him a senator, uh, you know, without even giving her so much as a heads up that he was going to do that. But, of yeah. course, Nikki Haley is not the person that this, you know, the people in this party are afraid of. It, yeah. It's President Trump. And then you have Nancy Mace, who Donald Trump, you know, you know endorsed her opponent. And, and, here, and Nikki Haley endorsed her. And yet here now we have her also backing President Trump. And all of this, of course, against the backdrop, as you said, uh, in the lead up to this conversation, uh, you know, he gets a break from the courthouse where, mm -hmm. you know, he continues to denounce E. Jean Carroll, uh, who he has been found civilly liable for mm -hmm. sexually assaulting 
uh, and, and, and all of this really just uh, is, is a reminder that, that we know who the former president is. We know who Nikki Haley Clearly. is. Uh, who are the voters, right? And, and, and what are the voters going to say? And, and what does what they have to say say about where we are as a country, that, that we are OK uh, with uh, somebody who has these accusation, accusations standing over them, is saying these things about uh, Nikki Haley that are racist, uh, that are misogynist, and this is not apparently disqualifying at, at all uh, for, for voters uh, as he makes uh, apparently his inevitable march to the GOP nomination. Well